Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 and I'm back with another video. This is just a very quick one. So IC Station had sent me this little board here, which is like a little musical, I uh, don't know exactly what it, it plays, but it's one of those like things in those uh, gift cards that when you open it, it plays a little song or something like that. And they sent this to me and I'm curious because I have no idea what's on here. The label, I can't read most of it, just the only thing I can read is 20 and DIY, so I have no idea. And uh, this description, I believe, is about the same right down here. Yeah. So it's fairly recent. It's from this past December. So I'm going to solder some leads on here. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll learn together what plays or if we can get it to work. Anyway, in the meanwhile, uh, I just want to show you a quick uh, new project. So um, I'm fixing this guy up, which is a, a second gen 20 gigabyte iPod Classic. This is like in, in vain with the original model of iPod. And this one has horribly, horrible damage. It was missing the hard drive. And um, this ribbon connector was ripped right off the board and all the pads were lifted. So I get the fun job of soldering tiny, tiny wires to all 40 of these wires or so. And then tracing it back onto the other side of the uh, motherboard and soldering to the vias right before the wires were ripped off the pads. So that's going to be a long-term project. I'm probably not going to finish that till like maybe <laughs> a year or now so because I have to get the courage and the steady hands to solder a few of the wires at a time if I try to do too many at once I'll, I know I'll get aggravated and damage it worse anyway my soldering irons heated up so we're gonna look at this board right here and uh, let me get a pointer tool so here we can see there are three coin cell spots and these are just in series you can tell because uh, this pad here is uh, the positive and this would be the negative goes over to the positive of the second battery then this negative goes to the positive of the last and this will be negative finally so I should be able to just solder uh, let's see a wire here how to do it and a wire here how to do it as well speakers go right here I don't have like a regular speaker all I have is this little piezo right now so we're just gonna quickly add a little bit of solder to that and uh, I'm going to need to do this in a way that won't melt my face off. Uh, sure, why not? And so it looks like they've pre-tinned these, but I'm just going to add a little bit of fresh solder. There we go. Okay, so speaker positive, negative, doesn't really matter, but I'll follow the convention anyway. So black is negative. And then red. Likewise, be positive. Okay, so now we have our speaker wired in there. So now we just need positive and negatives. So just take some IDE wire. We need some flux for this. We're already at four minutes. Jeez, well, probably because I blabbed on the first uh, minute and a half or so. Okay. So just take a little bit of the wire, twist it together, same thing here, dip it in, a little bit of the flux, get a little bit of solder on here. And this is what's called tinning the wire. So normally when you first get fresh wire, there's like a coating of oxide on there. And so it's usually just the bare wire. So you want to add a little bit of solder so that it sort of cleans it. And then when you go to remake the joint and re-solder it, it'll flow nice and smooth on there. So, okay. I said, uh, let's see, this will be positive. So I can stick the longer wire on there. Negative can go through here. Uh, just to be neat about it. I'm just going to poke a little bit of the wire through there. There we go. Do exactly what I did before. Add a fresh ball of solder, of solder, sorry. I had some uh, people commenting. Uh, I know foreign people pronounce words differently, and I have no problem with that, but I had a couple people who apparently have a problem with me saying solder instead of solder. I don't know really why it matters, because obviously they understood what I was talking about. <laughs> 
So it's not like they could misunderstand what I, what I was trying to say. It's just that they had a preference to saying it one way, and I have a preference for saying it another way. Not a problem. Shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so I'm just going to heat this guy up. And the wire just goes in it nice and neat. And I'll do the exact same thing for this guy. I'll get to a much larger pad. Try not to burn myself. Just sort of pull that wire in there. And there, there we go. Oddly enough, there seems to be two points here. Uh, it says MI something, maybe, or M1, something like that. There's a positive and negative. I wonder if there's like a, a motor feature you can attach to this and it'll rumble, or is that like a microphone input or something? If this is recordable, I have no idea. Anyway, there's a couple unpopulated parts as well, what looks like two sort of transistory packages. No idea what that is, but there is a power LED. Okay, here's the web page for the item. I just searched on their website, uh, the numbers here, 9498 uh, star 1. And this is a page that came up, so it's a 20 second voice record playback module. So I was a little bit off, it doesn't play like a pre-recorded message. This is actually recordable, which makes it a lot more interesting. Uh, 3 to 4.5 volts, so... I can run it off of like a little coin cell. It's actually on sale for just over $2, uh, which is awesome with free shipping. That's like nothing. That's This is an impulse buy if you want to shove into your project. Uh, so this is actually really cool now. I can think of maybe a couple things I could do with this that might be interesting. Um, so other than that, what do we have here? Uh, 20 second recording time. So that'll be more than enough for a lot of the uh, like small projects I want to play or maybe like I can do a prank project. Uh, so yeah, 3 to 4.5 volts. Uh, there are different uh, different buttons for different modes. Uh, you can set long push uh, cycle play. I'm guessing that's if you... I'm not too sure. I'll have to play around with that. Maybe if you like press and hold the button. So they denote here there's a common and then the four different buttons here, and there's RE, RL, PL, and PE for uh, whether it's like a push once or a long push. I'm guessing that means if you hold the button. Uh, oh yeah, I see. Yeah, so if you press and hold the button, it'll record, and when you lift, when you um, stop pressing the button, it stops recording. This uh, will uh, you press once to record, and you press again to stop recording. So RL is like a walkie-talkie. Uh, where you have to press and hold the button. RE is kind of, you toggle it with the button. And I guess similarly, PE is it just plays it through once. Um, and then PL is it'll play it so long as you're holding the button. So I probably want to use PE and uh, it doesn't really matter for RE or RL. Anyway, I think that's what's going to go on, but I have to play around with it to figure out. So the microphone goes here at plus minus. I'm guessing it's just a standard electric mic. So I have maybe one kicking around here, so hopefully I can find one. The loudspeaker goes here. I just have a little cheap piezo, so we're going to have to make do with that. And power, yeah, I can just grab the minus here probably and the positive here, something like that. Yeah, board's pretty small, and yeah, that's literally all you need to know about it. So let's, uh, let's test this out. Let's solder it up and figure out what's going on. I see, I see. So let's solder the microphone then. Yeah, definitely should have read RTFM first. Because <laughs> I had no idea what this was. But now, this is actually really cool. I have a couple of projects I think this could be used for. Okay, now I have a microphone. Hopefully an electric mic will work. I'm pretty sure it will. It's like a standard type of microphone. And I need some wires for the buttons. Okay, this is really cool. I finally figured out how to use it. I played around a little bit. So there's a common wire here, and then there's a play wire and a record wire. So if I tap the record wire once, it'll start recording and I can speak into the microphone. If I tap it again, it stops recording. 
Then if I tap the play, uh, just a quick tap to the play wire, it'll play back. And this LED will light up uh, to show you that you pressed a button and you'll hear a beep or a single beep or two beeps through the speaker. Now, unfortunately, I have my washing machine running, so it might be kind of difficult to hear. I might have to put the speaker up. And the quality is, uh, yeah, uh, what you'd expect pretty much from one of those little play card things. So, yeah, I'm just going to do a quick little test, and I'll show you guys. So power it up. Nothing happens. So I can just hit this. Hello, testing. One, two, three. Does a double beep. Done. Let's see. Just play that again, but near the uh, microphone. Okay, so <laughs> it all works. I'm almost uh, tempted to, instead of this microphone, uh, just solder like a line-in cable. So I can play something, say, off my, my phone and record it in better quality than just a simple mic. So I'm wondering what I should do with this. I, I never really thought to get one of these for myself, but since uh, IC Station provided one for me and I have one now and it works and it's pretty neato, what exactly should I do with this? It gives me up to 20 seconds of uh, playtime, so what projects can you guys think that would be uh, pretty neat? But yeah, we can uh, maybe do a, a neat little project. I was thinking something like uh, make a little 3D print, like a little Zelda chest, and then when you open it, it'll play the uh, the item jingle, or maybe, I, I don't know, there are tons of things I could do for this. Uh, pretty much limited by, I'd have to replace a speaker with a better speaker. This little piezo is not the best speaker, so that's probably the fact that I'm using like really uh, scavenged uh, crud quality components, or probably why it sounds so bad and it's not very loud. But yeah, uh, give me, you know, drop a, a few words down below exactly what you guys think I could do with this. Uh, what would be neat having like a 20 second recordable uh, unit that I can stick into a project that runs off of a USB, you know, five volt power pack. Uh, so yeah, just let me know and I'll continue playing around with this and uh, trying to think of myself exactly what I could do with this. So anyway.